I thought their backs ran very good, uh, South Alabama, but it seemed like after contact they got more yards than you probably would have liked to have had. Is that correct? No, you, you're certainly right. Way, way too many uh, yards out of contact. And uh, that's one thing that we certainly going to pay attention to this week. We're not satisfied with the way we tackled on defense. I thought we populated the football very well, um, but there was just too many leaky yardage. You know, the first guy there, I mean, we got to get, uh, you know, get hands on his claws, come up with a body part, and not let him gain additional yardage. I mean, we knew he was a pretty good running back going in, but we certainly have to tackle better. You played a lot of people Saturday. Some of the backups that caught your eye and after you watched the film, clue us in. Well, I, I tell you what, the plan was going in, uh, Chuck, to, you know, let's let's get to the full quarter fresh and let's try and play, you know, a number of guys. Um, and we thought the guys that went out on the first unit played played really, really well. Um, you know, some of the guys that came in in reserve role, if you will. Uh, the one guy that we thought was Breon Dixon. You know, he came in in reserve role and, and uh, he played a little better than he practiced. So we told him, hey, you need to practice like you played in the game. You know, C.J. Miller, the freshman, uh, he showed some promising signs, some things that we have to get corrected, but he showed some good signs. Uh, Austin came in, number 52, and did, did a pretty good job uh, and, you know, at that position. And so we just got to continue to look at the second line guys, so to speak, and, and uh, we got to close the gap. Uh, there was a lot of guys that came in in the second wave and uh, just showed us a little bit of a drop off. So we're going to pay attention to that and go coach the player. And there's not too many of them in that second wave, Chuck, that caught my eye. You know, a lot of them caught my eye in terms of we better coach them a little bit better to get them up to speed. So uh, that's where we're at with that unit right now. Coach Luke talked about the defense staff being on the field at the point of conflict, I think, is the way he put I'm it. Sorry, liked it a point, lot. Yeah. I said Coach Luke talked about the defensive staff all being on the field, and he kind of liked that the way that that worked out at the point of conflict, I think, is how he, he described it. Just your thoughts in general on, on that. I'm going to support whatever he says. That's the head coach. He's trying to say. But, no, nah, we, we discussed it, and i tell you what, uh, Coach Luke has been a tremendous support for the defensive staff. I mean, you're talking about a tremendous asset, you know, to have a guy that's an expert at offensive line. And uh, he does a tremendous job of helping us in the run game, identify the issues that's going on. And, and uh, he supported from day one of having all the guys, you know, down on the sideline. It was very beneficial because when you look at the overall picture, uh, just like Coach Luke said, the most important day is game day. And these guys are with these players throughout the week. And then you take the most important day and you put them in the press box. Now they're, they're separated from each other. I mean, in some ways, in some ways, that, that possibly can be a, be a bad thing for the athlete. And so, uh, you know, he looked at it carefully after we talked about it. And, and uh, we came to the conclusion that that's the best thing to do for the players right now in terms of adjustments and, uh, and, and morale. And it worked out well. I mean, I thought you look on the sideline, uh, Coach Jones from Coach Peaver told Coach Roach, I mean, every time those guys came off the field, you can see them over there making adjustments. And uh, now I don't have to go over and talk to every individual player, and we can make adjustments quick and, um, you know, get going. I thought that's the one thing that we did do well, the halftime adjustments and sideline adjustments. The guys were really locked in. Uh, the coaches had great eyes in terms of seeing, you know, some of the things that we need to get fixed right away. And it was a tremendous help to have them down on the sideline. You've mentioned a little bit, Wesley, about depth and, and whatnot, but you were excited about that before the game. Were you a little surprised at maybe the lack of production from some of your second team guys? Well, no, we, we knew going in that, you know, that we were going to have some, some growing pains with the second unit. The hardest thing is to be composed during the game while it's going on. But the positive of it is that we had an opportunity to get them in an uncontrolled environment, in a game, get them on the field, and find out what we need to coach. And it's not so much the players' uh, fault. It's that it shows us what we have to coach and what we have to get better at. So we just have to pay attention to what we saw on video and uh, get those guys up to speed. Because as you know, it's a long season. We play a violent game, and at some point, now we'll need those guys to come in and step in and make a play or two. How many freshmen did you end up playing? I think I, I counted four. I'm sure I missed some people. You know what? I, I, I didn't even count, so I'm going to have to go with your number. I know okay. D.D. Bowie played. Uh, uh, I know Ryder Anderson, he, he also played. Dixon. And, uh, and who was the other freshman that played? Dixon and and uh, C.J. Miller we just mentioned. So uh, that's at least three there that played. And, and the biggest reason why 
you know, you get to this point and you don't know exactly how many true freshmen play. Man, you can't look at classification. You got to get a coast up and let's go. Coach, you've talked about some of the improvements that you guys need to make for week two, but were you happy with the overall energy of your defense? Yes, I was real pleased with the effort. I, I thought they came out and played with phenomenal energy. I thought the effort was outstanding. I, I thought we populated the football uh, real well. It's just that one fumble that was on the ground. You know, you want to come up with that fumble, and then you're really happy with the way uh, they populated the football. And then at, at times you see guys, you know, not really getting to the football. But overall, you're exactly right. We're, we're satisfied with the effort. And uh, we want to continue to get better in that department. But you can definitely see the energy, excitement, and effort, you know, on the field. A couple of weeks ago, y'all moved Chuck Wiley inside. And now you've kind of moved him, or according to Saturday night, you moved him back to defensive end. Did he flash for you a little bit? Yeah, you know, it's, it's great, Chuck, when you have some guys that can offer you some versatility. And, um, and and we try our best not to move guys around too often. But unfortunately, you know, with some of our depth issues and injuries, uh, you have to move a guy. And we're real careful about the particular player that we move. But Chuck is one that can offer us some, some support outside at defensive end. And also he can offer some support at inside at three techniques. So r real pleased with his effort. Um, I think his minimal mistakes was very minimal, which means that he can – double task for us. So we're real pleased with what he came off of for us on Saturday night. Now that you have, you know, Ken Webster and Dietrich bring Dukes back, how do you kind of foresee them fitting in depth-wise and scheme-wise? Uh, fitting in, it's time for them to go. Um, we, you know, we're excited to get them back. I mean, as the head coach said, you know, uh, uh, you know, once a guy does something and pay his debt, it's time to move on. So. Uh, don't be surprised they walk out with the first unit. Don't be surprised they walk out with the second unit. It's all going to be determined how they practice this week. But, uh, you know, we're looking forward, we're excited to get those guys back and looking forward to what they can add to the defense. How about Jalen Jones at uh, safety? How did he How did he look? i tell you what, Chuck, from day one, we moved him back to he looked natural. And, uh, you know, uh, there was one particular play, man, we thought he was going get to get an interception. And I'm sure the sideline would have erupted. You know, you put a guy back there and – that's his first game at safety, and he gets his hands on the ball. It's very exciting, but uh, he did a lot of good things. I thought his run fits was good. I thought he did a tremendous job on his pass fits, and uh, I think he's going to do nothing but get better once he gets time on task. Coach, free safety was your position on defense that wasn't settled going into the season, clear cut, but they kind of stood out during the game. Just, just talk about the group's overall play there at free safety. Well, you know, we, right now, with the, the guy that's really playing well for us back there is number 36. Xavier Woods is really playing well for us, and uh, he offers a lot of stability back there. The, the guy can quarterback the defense, you know, make the checks, get a set, you know, and play fast, you know. And then uh, C.J. Moore, uh, he played well, you know, back there at safety. And nowadays, you know, you, you, can, you can say on paper there's a strong safety and a free safety, but by way of formation and movement, they can make you strong and free and free to strong. So, you know, we both going to play with uh, interchangeable safeties. And I think both of them did a tremendous job. And then, uh, you know, C.J. Hampton came in and gave us a shot in the arm back there, as well as uh, C.J. Miller. And uh, I thought the star position played well, you know, as a down safety corner type guy. So we saw a lot of positive things at the safety position, but we got to continue to keep getting better and keep growing guys to play in that spot. And I think we really helped ourselves by moving number 31, uh, Jalen Julius over there. Jalen Jones, I'm sorry, over to that spot. Coach, you had a – Redshirt freshman Mike Linebacker, never played in a game before. Give, give us your observation of Dante Evans. Uh, Dante Evans, I, I tell you what, I thought he did a tremendous job, one, of being poised. Because when he, he has to receive the calls and make the checks. And, you know, that, that in itself will make a young man a little nervous and play outside of himself. I thought Dante did a tremendous job of being poised, making the calls, getting the defense set. He was very engaging. Uh, sometimes he's coming over giving me advice. You know, saying, hey, coach, we need to call so-and-so. So I look at him and say, if we call, it better work. You know, so <laughs> it was good to see Mike Linebacker do that. And you saw times where he really played fast and, uh, you know, got to his run fits and his pass fit. The thing that he has to get better on is just his coverage. He knows that. And a lot of times it wasn't a guy necessarily just beating him one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, he just need to clean up his alignment. You know, and sometimes when you're lining other people up, sometimes you're off just a little bit on your alignment. So he needs to clean his alignment up. But real please. Real pleased with the way he played and quarterback the defense.
You know, Coach, uh, Gates is the most experienced linebacker, but overall, how do, how do you think the linebacker unit is coming along? I thought DeMarcus Gates played, played outstanding. I mean, you look, you put on the tape, uh, you'll see number three fast. I mean, he played exceptionally fast, we thought, as a defensive staff. He was very physical. Uh, the couple times on the goal line, uh, we had those goal line stands. Uh, he did a tremendous job of holding the fort, as we call it, you know, letting the gap expand. You know, so that we can insert defenders inside and making the play, showing some good signs of physicality, and uh, he showed some leadership. And uh, the thing I told him, you know, during the game, hey, keep smiling. When you smile, you make plays. When you start frowning, I don't know who you are, but it was really good to see him make those plays and provide some leadership.